station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Betsy Ross Elementary School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Sarah Cordett, Betsy Ross Elementary School teacher here with the students. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. How are you guys doing? Betsy Ross, do you guys hear us from the space station? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for taking our call. We're so excited and so grateful to have um, <laughs> this amazing opportunity to speak with you both while on board the space station. We've been following you closely for um, weeks, and <laughs> we're so excited uh, to be able to speak with you. There's an auditorium full of students here who are really excited to ask you questions. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I know, I know that there are many scary things. I know that there are many scary things in space, like darkness and no oxygen. What is the scariest thing about space for you? The question well, you was... Know, there, there, you're right. There are a lot of scary things in space. And uh, the way we work around that, I think, uh, you know, like you said, vacuum, there could be a fire or a depressurization of the modules. And we practice and uh, what we are going to do in the in emergency. We know our roles and our responsibilities. And I think with that practice, that helps us overcome those fears. Online, I've learned how astronauts use a spacesuit to survive during a spacewalk. If you were to re-engineer the spacesuit, what would you change and why? Very good question. Um, that's a very hard problem. We've had engineers working on new spacesuits for us for, a, for many, many years, and uh, hopefully they're getting close to a solution. I think I would just make it less bulky. It's really big and bulky right now. And if there's any way that we could trim that down and make it a little more sleek, and that way we can have more dexterity in our hands, um, I think it would be better. But that's a hard problem to solve. Soon you'll be the first two-time female commander of the space station. What do you think needs to happen to get more women into NASA? Well, you know what? I think we need more young ladies like yourself studying in science, math, and engineering, and really actually pursuing goals there, knowing that women can be in space and be astronauts and be engineers and, tech and uh, technicians that, that can really solve pr interesting technical problems for NASA. So you, you need to study and get out there and help us out. Based on research, I know astronauts get some medical training, but I am curious what happens when there is a medical emergency that they are not equipped to handle. Good question. We're handled. We're equipped to handle a lot of the situations that may come about. We all get trained in medical training. Uh, we're crew medical officers is what they call us, so we go through that training. Uh, but if there's something we can't handle, we always have mission control to talk to, and there's an actual doctor, or we call them flight surgeons, that will be there talking us through a procedure if we need their help. I read that scientists discovered planets that may be able to have life. How did they look around other stars outside our solar system? Was the ISS involved or will they be? 
Well, that is a very good question for someone your age. I'm very impressed. Um, but the Kepler Space Telescope is one space telescope that looks in particular for uh, planets, other planets, and life. But what the and the Hubble Space Telescope can also look for other planets. Um, it's interesting that you know we we think about light and looking and seeing something through a telescope that only we can see. But there are other things that are out there that. Uh, the scientists can look at, which is like gamma radiation, uh, infrared radiation, other things that can tell them and give them clues about where planets might be in other solar systems. I read on the website that there are about 150 foods on board the ISS. How do you get all your nutrients from such few foods, and do you get tired of them? Great question. Food is always an important part of everybody's uh, world, I guess. And same with us. Peggy's showing you a few of our choices here with a drink bag, a pouch of food, as well as a dehydrated food. Uh, we do have 150 or so, I think, and that is actually very good. It does give us a lot of variety so that we don't get bored with the same food over and over. And we're lucky enough to have Russian crewmates as well as French astronauts on this mission. So we get to enjoy Russian food as well as French food sometimes. So it keeps the, the variety nice and it doesn't let us get bored with what we're having. But it's very important for us to eat enough and get the nutritional value that you mentioned um, so that our bones and our muscles don't decay while they're up here in space. I learned the ISS is a place where astronauts from many different countries go. How do, all, how do you all get along and communicate? That's a great question. This is the International Space Station, and we have 15 different countries represented from all over the world. Uh, and we have astronauts from all those different countries here at one time or another. Right now we have uh, three Russians on board, two Americans, and one French astronaut. Uh, in general, we speak a lot of English, uh, but it kind of depends on what we're working on. If we're working in the Soyuz, for instance, the Soyuz spacecraft that uh, brings us up and takes us home from the space station, uh, it's primarily Russian because it's a Russian-built vehicle and all the procedures and the displays are in Russian. So in general, I would say mostly in English, um, which is lucky for me because learning another language was very, very difficult. <laughs> You are the commander of the ISS. However, what happens if a crime is committed on board? Well, we try not to let that happen. Uh, it hasn't happened certainly in our in my six months up here. Um, so, you know, we, we obviously work together as teams before we come up here to make sure we don't have any issues with our, you know, personality issues or things like that. We have to work together as a team. We're on a remote expedition, so uh, we don't have any room for people doing things kind of on their own or against the rules or against the law. So we've been very fortunate on this mission to have great crewmates, and I have not had to worry about uh, putting somebody in space jail. Do countries share the research data and discoveries from the ISS w with each other? Yes, actually, a lot of the countries are working together on different types of research. We have, for instance, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, uh, which has, I think, on order of 15 countries from all over the world. Uh, and we're doing, for instance, another experiment called Fluid Shifts. It's a joint U.S. and Russian experiment. Another investigation, uh, neuro, looking at neurovestibular changes that's done by U.S. and European investigators. So. Yes, we share all our data and research, and uh, we encourage all the scientists to publish so that everyone knows the results of our research. I know that astronauts have a super busy schedule, or that schedule's on a five minute. How do you manage all the stuff you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep? Thank you. 
Well, we uh, we kind of look at our schedule the night before, typically, so we have an idea of what's going to happen. You know, sometimes overnight the schedule will change, but usually it's not drastically. So we have an idea. That way we can get it organized in our minds. Sometimes we'll even get the equipment out ahead of time to uh, just make us more efficient. A lot of times during the day, we, we're not working together. We're working on different projects or different maintenance on the space station. But, but if we have free time, we'll go help each other out. And that obviously um, creates a great bond between our crew and just helps the whole efficiency of the space station. So even though we are scheduled down you know, to, like you said, about five minutes every five minutes, uh, we usually have plenty of time at the end of the day because we work very well together. And, uh, and if all the equipment behaves, then we'll usually be done a little bit early. What is the best thing you have done in Six Out Science? Well, I think probably my biggest contribution is being able to help all the different scientists uh, on Earth. There are over 270 investigations going on during our increment, and being able to assist in as many of those as possible is really important to me. But of course, personally, I like, I like doing the hands-on research, uh, particularly involving biomedical or uh, biochemical sciences. Those to me are the most interesting because that's where my background and my training are in. But I, I really enjoy doing all of the different things. I'm wondering how does it feel when you land back on Earth after being in space for so long? Well, I'm about to find out uh, one week from today because me and my crew head back to Earth on Monday next week. So uh, your body is, is, uh, has to adjust to gravity again because we haven't had it in, in about six months. So it's going to be an interesting feeling, I think. Uh, we feel a little dizzy in general just because your, your sense of balance is kind of off because it doesn't know where it is for a while. So it takes a few days to figure that out. And uh, as Peggy's showing you here, we can do this in space, but I won't be able to do that here in a week when I get back to Earth. But in general, our bodies adapt within a week or so, I think, um, where you're feeling pretty good. And then you just work on getting stronger and stronger by working out in the gym and uh, getting your bones and muscles back to where they used to be um, if they're not there already. There are many things floating in space, but how does the ISS detect if something is approaching the space station? Actually, on board the space station, we don't detect it, but we have uh, experts on the ground that are tracking all the big things that might be floating around out in space, any space debris. And uh, if we need to, we can do a maneuver of the space station. That requires fuel. Uh, so it's not something that we do routinely, but if we, if there's a risk that we might be hit by something, uh, then we will either increase our altitude or decrease our altitude um, to try and miss whatever object is out there. I found that the ISS has conducted studies and research about germs. However, I am curious about what happens if an astronaut becomes sick in space. How do the astronauts on board ISS prevent the spread of germs? That's a great question. And before we launch, we go into a thing called quarantine for about two weeks. And that's to keep us away from the general public so that we don't bring all these germs potentially up into space in this kind of small environment. Because if somebody does get sick up here, it'll spread very quickly throughout the rest of the crew. Uh, well, knock on wood, we've been very lucky in the six months or so I've been here and everybody's been feeling great. We do take precautions like you were asking about on keeping our hands clean and keeping our utensils clean. Um, and our bodies clean in general so that we don't spread, you know, unnecessary germs to other crew members. Why do astronauts have to take turns living on the space station? Why can't astronauts live on board the space station longer? Well, we could live on board the space station longer, but most of us actually want to get home and see our families eventually. So 
uh, we do we do want to just get home and and we want to share the experience with as many people as possible so it's only fair that we should take turns and uh, return home but part of the reason that we're li we're living up here for six months periods of time or a little more is to try and understand what how our bodies react to being in space this long because when we go to Mars maybe you guys in the future when you're traveling to Mars the research that we're doing on our bodies now will help us determine how to make you safer on your trip to Mars Are you working on anything top secret that we can't know about yet? That's a good question. A lot of people think that, but no, everything, um, all these investigations and experiments we're working on that Peggy was talking about earlier, um, the scientists get all the data. We're not keeping anything from them or from anybody else. Um, there was a day you know, where there were some somewhat secret missions back in the early days of the space program, but uh, not anymore. We like to share our data so that everybody on Earth can benefit. How do astronauts play in space? What do you do for fun? Actually, being able to take advantage of just being in zero gravity is a lot of fun. And so sometimes we do different tricks in space, uh, actually even with food or just hanging out. We uh, will go in all different directions because it's just easy to do. So just being here is actually a lot of fun. Uh, experience. Oh, and look, we got another crew member coming through. Watch out. So everybody has fun up here um, just being in zero gravity. Uh, we love to look out the window and take pictures of the beautiful Earth below. Uh, that's a lot of entertainment for us uh, because it's just so unique. It's such a novel part of what we're doing up here. Uh, so that's probably one of the best pastimes we have. research, I know that long-duration space missions are causing some eye problems for the astronauts, like the back of their eyes flatten. What do astronauts aboard the ISS do when this happens, and how do you handle other space travel side effects when you return to Earth? Yeah, there have been some cases, you're right. Um, thank goodness it's the minority of astronauts, and uh, nobody in our crew has had these issues yet. Uh, but there, you know, we do we do do medical exams probably every month or every month and a half on our eyes to make sure that nothing's happening crazy. Um, we do some uh, ultrasound images of our eyes, just like a doctor would do on the ground. So we get to do that on each other and help each other out, and all that data gets into the ground for our doctors to analyze to make sure everything on our eyes look great. Uh, we and potentially maybe we'll have some issues when we get back on the ground on Earth as well. Uh, and we have plenty of doctors that make sure they're there to help us um, get through whatever issues they are. The good part about the eye issues you've heard about is they do resolve once uh, the crew member gets back on the ground after several months, so that's a good thing. On my Google expedition, I noticed that there are many hidden pieces and buttons. That seems confusing. What is the most challenging thing about being in space for you? I think probably the most challenging thing about being in space is uh, is probably just being away from family and friends for a long period of time. Uh, luckily, we can talk to them on an internet protocol phone, so we're, we're able to be up here for several months without feeling too isolated from them. But I think that's probably the biggest challenge of, of living up here. Wow. What a great experience this has been. We want to thank Shane Kimbrough and Peggy Whitson for taking the time to talk with Ross Elementary. We also want to congratulate Shane and Peggy on their recent extravehicular activity last Thursday, March 30th. In addition, we would like to acknowledge all of the work of Expedition 50 and Commander Shane Kimbrough, who will come back to Earth on April 10th. Finally, congratulations to Peggy Whitson on soon becoming the first female two-time commander of the International Space Station and for 
soon breaking the record for the most time in space on April 24th. A big thank you to all of us here at Betsy Ross Elementary School and Anaheim Elementary School District. Thank you so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants and guests from Betsy Ross Elementary School. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.